Lord, open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, and our hearts to receive you. Amen. So the Hebrew scripture passage that we heard this morning is called the Akedah, or the binding of Isaac in Judaism. Jewish commentators believe it refers back to ancient times when child sacrifice was still practiced by many religions. In other words, God was asking Abraham to do what the other neighboring tribes' gods asked them to do. And Abraham responded just as his neighbors would have responded by offering to sacrifice their children to their gods. This is one of those biblical stories that I struggled with for years. And as a teenager, I questioned how the God that I knew could ask someone to kill their own son. It didn't help as my relationship with God deepened and when I became a mother. I did notice that Abraham doesn't tell Sarah what God asked him to do. So as I heard this story read in the church over the years, I struggled with what is this scripture saying? And I wondered why Abraham didn't tell Sarah and why he didn't argue with God. He bartered with God over the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham asked God to spare Sodom if there were 50 righteous people. Then he asked if there were only 45 righteous people or maybe 40, 30, 20? What about if there were only 10 righteous people in this city? and God agrees not to destroy the city. So Abraham has asked God to change God's mind in the past. So why not when he asks Abraham to sacrifice Isaac? I read commentaries on the story, but I couldn't find anything that agreed with my experience of a God who loves us and wants the best for each of us. But then I read a commentary on scripture by Madeline Engel in her book, The Rock That Is Higher. Now, Madeline Engel, most of you probably have heard of because she wrote her children's books, uh, The Wrinkle in Time series. So Madeline begins her commentary by explaining that she was leading a writer's workshop, and she asked the participants to write on the binding of Isaac. One woman, a Jewish Christian, had been raised hearing Midrashim, the rabbi's commentaries and interpretation on scripture. And she'd already written on the binding of Isaac from several different perspectives. So Madeline Engel asked her to write from God's perspective. And the story is a dialogue between God and the archangel Raphael. And it goes, Raphael is very pleased with Abraham's response to God's demand to sacrifice his son Isaac and begins extolling Abraham's virtues to God. And God is not enthusiastic. The more Raphael praises Abraham, the less enthusiastic God gets. And finally, Raphael says, but God, you put Abraham to the test and he passed. And God replies, he didn't pass. He failed. He chose law over love. He chose law over love. And then Madeline Angel continues that suddenly all the lights went on for her because even though Abraham may have failed the test, God continued to love him. Even as God continues to love each of us through our, all of our failures of faith. And as I read the story, suddenly for the first time it made sense to me. Of course Abraham failed the test, but God continued to love him anyway, just as God continues to love each of us, even though we make bad decisions and fail to be the people that God wants each of us to be. God continued to be with Abraham, just as God continues to be with each one of us. And in the Christian tradition, there's Peter, who on the night that Jesus is arrested in the garden tells Jesus that, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus says, I tell you, Peter, the cock will crow this day. The cock will not crow this day until you have denied me three times. 
And we know how the story goes. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter said among them, then a servant girl seeing him in the firelight stared at him and said, this man also was with them. But he denied it saying, woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, you also are one of them. And Peter said, man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, surely this man also was with him because he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went, went out and wept bitterly. After the resurrection, Jesus comes to Peter on the beach and asks him three times if he loves him. And is asking, Jesus forgives Peter for his denial and restores the relationship between them. Abraham and the binding of Isaac failed God. He chose law over love and God loved him anyway. That didn't do it for you. <laughs> Each year, the shofar, the ram's horn, is sounded on Rosh Hashanah to tell people to wake up, pay attention to what God is doing. The shofar, the ram's horn, is a reminder of God's providence, a reminder of how God provides for God's people. As the people heard the binding of, binding of Isaac read on Rosh Hashanah, the ram's horn reminds them that God will provide. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went out and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide, as it has, is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, the Lord shall provide. The ram was there, but Abraham was so focused on what he thought God wanted him to do that he failed to see the ram. How often do we fail to see the opportunities or gift that God has given us because we are so focused on what we think God wants us to do? When Mark and myself were discerning our call to ordain ministry, I thought God was asking me to give up the trumpet. So I prayed and told God that I would give up the trumpet. So I quit the orchestra, even sold one of my trumpets because I was sure that, that, was not, that I was not going to be going to seminary and playing there. Well, once we arrived, Mark and myself were asked to fill the newly created positions of music tutors for the seminary community. And then I was asked to play for morning prayer and the community Eucharist. And then it turns out their classmate's husband played with a quintet from the Air Force Band, and they needed another trumpeter. So God did provide the opportunity to practice and play the trumpet and continues to provide opportunities for me to play. But I was so focused on going to seminary and my idea of what God intended that I failed to perceive that God would provide ways for me to continue to use my musical abilities. So now I have the opportunity to sound the shofar in the church, saying, wake up, pay attention to what God is doing. Just as the shofar is sounded in the synagogue to remind people that in the binding of Isaac, God did provide and continues to provide for each one of us. Each day, God provides each of us with the opportunity to respond to those around us. Do we become so focused on what we think God wants us to do that we fail to see the opportunities before us? 
So using the scripture passage, I encourage you to wake up this week and notice the opportunities that God is providing in your life and in the life of our church. Abraham failed. He chose law over love. But God loved him anyway. Amen.